This is my beginner crochet stitches series, and in this tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to do the double crochet crossover stitch. Hi guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to do the double crochet crossover stitch. At least that's what I've been calling it. Uh, it I do it in sets of three. It doesn't have to be done in sets of three, obviously, but um, I just think that it looks good. So, I mean, if you want more, um, then a set of three, then just make uh, sure that your project will uh, allow for more of a ruffle. Because the more of a set that you do, the more stitches that you're adding double. Because you're going in one side of the stitch and then the other. So you're essentially, you're doubling your stitches. So I found that three sets is a pretty good number to control. So what you want to do is crochet in sets of three. So if you want, you can just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you know, just keep doing it in sets of three. And then when you're ready, um, this really, the stitch really needs to have a base. So I'm going to do a row of single crochets first. So I did my sets of three. And then since I'm doing a single crochet, I only need one step up. So I'm going to do a plus one. That's going to be my step up so I can actually work in my third stitch here when I counted one, two, three. But I can't work in that stitch unless I do one more chain. So I do that one more chain and then now I can work in this third stitch. And I'm going to do single crochets all the way down to give me that base that I need. Okay, I got to the end of my row. And what I'm using is regular medium sized worst weight yarn, which would be four ply for the US or ten ply for Australia. If you look at your uh, paper and it says it has a four on it, then that's four, four ply. So you can also use any size hook. This is a six millimeter hook. I wanted to choose a big hook just so that you'll be able to see the stitch better, but it can be done using a five millimeter, you know, whatever. So any size hook or any size yarn, this is just a stitch. So when I get to the end of my row, I want to chain one and then turn. Now this is the, the part of the stitch that it may be best explained by looking at, see, the chain itself. It has a loop. One of the part of the stitch is on one side of the hook. See, if you just look at the hook, I mean the loop itself, this is before it becomes a stitch. It becomes a stitch only when you, you put yarn through it. See? Now it's a stitch. Because you're moving on. You don't need this anymore. You now can start adding even more yarn, you know? So once you add that yarn through it, it's become a stitch. Until then, it's a loop. But while it's a loop, you can even see. It's got one string running this way and one string running this way. So every stitch will have two sections, this, just like this. Every stitch will have two sections because of the loop will ha has two sections. So what we're going to be doing is when we start our stitch, we're going to be working in only one of these sides. And then we're going to go back through and work through the other side. So if you look closely on your stitches here, and you're going to be facing this way, we're going to be working in what's called the back stitch because it's facing the back of our project. And then we're going to go back through and work through the front stitch. You See that? We're going to be working in sets of three. So we're going to be working in the back stitch of this one, this one, and this one. Then we're going to go back through and do double crochets through the front stitch here, here, and here. So in our first stitch here, we chained one just to give us that stepping up space. But within that same space that we chained one in, we want to grab just that back stitch only. Whoops, let me yarn over first. Actually, you want to yarn over. And then going into that back 
stitch only, you want to put a double crochet. And double crochet is only pulling through two and two. Yarn over. Hopefully by now, if you're at this point, you definitely have mastered the double crochet. So now I'm going into the next stitch, which is this one, and going also into that back loop only. And doing a double crochet. And again, for our third section of the stitch, because like I said, we're going to do three double crochets in a row. So this is our third going into that back stitch only, leaving this these front parts here of the stitch to be worked in in just a moment. Now you see these are our, our front stitches and if you fold it you can see it even better. They kind of pop out. These are our front stitches that we skipped front of our stitches. So what we want to do now is starting in the very first one that we did, first double crochet that we did here, yarn over, grab up this front loop, and you want to do a double crochet using that front loop now. And again, using the second front loop here, you want to grab it and do a double crochet. And again, our third front loop. And I know it's hard to see that the back is attached, but if you look back here, you can see that yes, this one is been worked. And, then, and this really is our front stitch. Whoops, by showing you that I lost my yarn over. There you go. Now I did my third double crochet. Now you have three double crochets worked in the front stitch and three double crochets worked in the back the back loop. So this is worked in your front loop. And like I said, I usually work them in sets of three. And if you want to increase to where you get a lot of ruffle, like if you're doing it for a border, you don't you do not want to skip a stitch. You want to go right into the next and start your next set. But if you're wanting something to gradually get pretty ruffled over, you know, maybe two, three rows before it really starts picking up a lot of ruffle, then you want to skip at least two stitches. What I do is I just skip two, then go into that third stitch. So if you want to have a fast ruffle for an end, a border, don't skip. You want to, you know, extend your your ruffle for several rows. Then I would suggest to skip stitches. So I'm going to show you how to um, to do this next one in slow motion.
and that's it. That's how you do the double crochet crossover stitch. I hope that this tutorial has been helpful. And when you get to the next row, see how it's already ruffling up here? It does it automatically. When you get to the next row, all you do is just, just chain one again and start into the exact same stitch where you chained one. So you would be chaining one here and then going right into this this first stitch, just the back part of the stitch here. And then again, the next one, you do the, the back ones and then you go back to the front ones. But you only really need a chain one step up because you want to go right back into that same stitch. And if you chain two, it's not going to help much because you're going to be going right back into that same stitch. So when you get to the end, chain one and use the same exact stitch where you did the chain one. And that's it. But keep in mind, if you haven't skipped any, that this is going to be extremely ruffled. Even with my ruffle skirt, I did one row of non-skipping, and then the very next row, I did. I started my skipping two between each set so that I could do my ruffles a little longer before I uh, got too much of a ruffle because every row where you add ruffles, you're adding so much more stitches, so that means so much more yarn. So please keep this in mind uh, for your project. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, please don't forget to share and like this video. And please don't forget to subscribe.